Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Today we are bringing you my updated Invoked Ligma deck profile. This has had a couple of changes since the beginning of the format. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do as much testing as I might have liked because events aren't on. Let me apologize in advance if there are any crazy noises in the background. Uh, it's Durali, so there's loads of fireworks going off. Uh, my pug is glued to me today, so he's doing lots of grunting, snoring, slurping just the other side of the kitchen uh, and it just I don't know it's one of those days where all the background noise is going on so hopefully not too much of that and also there is a new setup with the camera so again apologies in advance if this looks kind of funky in any way I'm trying to do the best I can I seem to be having some issues with the focus but hopefully it's all visible for you anyway that's enough nonsense from me uh, welcome to the channel if this is your first time here please hit subscribe so you don't forget to do it going forward if this is not your first time here well you're uh you, you know what you're in for. So anyway, we're going to get stuck into the Invoked Dogmatica deck profile and uh, hopefully it's to your taste. Hopefully it'll give you some ideas of what to do. We'll also have a test hands video going up at a slightly different time to give you some ideas of lines of play you might take depending on what hands you get. Again, I've been playing this deck since it dropped into the game. So I like to think I'm competent enough to give you some ideas of what you could do, particularly if you're looking to learn the deck. Okay, so slightly different to usual. We normally do these as monster spells, traps, and go through that way. I'm actually going to show you these as uh, we're going to go through each engine to make it a little bit easier for those of you who may be looking to target specific things uh, and changes you'd like to make. So we're starting off with Triple Ecclesia. I think that this is pretty much mandatory in this deck. I can't really think of a scenario where you'd want less than three. It's a really, really important card. It can help wall things out if you're up against, uh, you know, tricky extra deck monsters and that kind of thing. Uh, it obviously gets you your searches uh, yeah it just does everything you need to do like you want to see this in your hand with a way to get into your evoked engine and you're normally set from there we then have two copies of Fleur. Uh, I always toy between going to higher and lower numbers of this. But sometimes I really want to have three in here just for extra targets, uh, just to get a bigger body on board, that kind of thing. Uh, but then there's times where it's just in your hand and gets in the way and doesn't do anything of use for you. And then it's kind of dead. So uh, it doesn't come up too much for its actual effect to negate. That doesn't happen a lot. Uh, but it is there a lot of the time to help you push for damage. And with that in mind, we are playing one copy of Water. Wolverine, uh, Ashian or whatever he's called. This is the new one that's come out in uh, Phantom Rage. Um, I've been testing this a little bit online. I quite like it at one. I'm not sold on it just yet. I'm also thinking about playing Maximus, which I'm not playing in this build. Uh, the idea being that you can go into these or you can go into this and then make like Dingirsu or you have other ways to interrupt as well. I think Maximus is better now than it was before. Unfortunately, I just don't have it at the moment. Um, but it's better now than it was uh, like earlier in the format because people have stopped maining uh, outs in their extra deck to the deck. So it just does a lot better. And there's certain decks that just auto wins against. But yeah, one copy of Wolverine anyway. Uh, again, just another body on board. It helps stick for damage. It means you can keep resolving the rest of your Dogmatica stuff that searches. Uh, and again, it's, it's another eight so that you can make overlays if that's what you want to do. And then we move on to the absolutely mandatory triple copies of Nadir Servant. Uh, again, pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure I don't need to go into any detail too much about this. But again, one of the most important cards in the deck. And then finally, just a single copy of Punishment to round off this engine. Uh, Punishment is absolutely insane. And again, there's games where I just wish I had more copies of it. I don't know. There's a lot of the time it's also... It, like, it could be dead in multiples. I could definitely see... Um, just one copy is all we've really got space for in here. Although, again, the temptation is there to play more and definitely to consider siding some. Next up, we're looking through the Invoked Engine. We've got triple copies of Alistair. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to upgrade these soon to the nice new gold rares because Secret is lower rarity, in my opinion. And uh, the nice gold trim looks pretty nice. Anyway, three copies of Alistair the Invoker here. Uh, it does what it says on the tin. You already know exactly what you're in for with this card. Uh, the best normal summon in your deck it is the Hand Trap Magnet, so be prepared. If you haven't played this deck before, this guy's effect is hardly ever going through. We have triple copies of Magical Meltdown. Again, mandatory, I feel, to just get into this card get the engine going and of course helping 
protect your boards a little bit with your fusions. And then finally we have two copies of Invocation, one that again I would highly recommend potentially moving up to three copies. A lot of the time the issue with this is that if you don't have the third copy, then when you have Alistair and he gets hand trapped, a lot of the time you can't continue with your plays. Uh, whereas if you have the third copy and you have it in hand, that means that you've got ways to play. So definitely some consideration should be given to a third copy. Again, just don't have it at the moment. Uh, it's very, very hard to justify buying into a lot of stuff at the moment moment particularly with no locals on but i'm sure once they're back on and once events are up and running i'll get the third copy here again most of this has been play tested online so it's quite limited uh, and i would recommend again running the third one of these if you are if you aren't or you're looking to copy this build and for the next part, we have everyone's favourite bit, the hand traps. Uh, pretty much mandatory to have a gazillion in your decks at the moment. Uh, and we're seeing that here. So we've got triple copies of Gamma and Driver. I fucking hate these, but they've kind of got to be played. Uh, it's so strong at the moment. And of course... The, the odd person that does run Call by the Grave, you know, it, it plays around that. Um, it's just, it's so strong. The fact that it gets rid of the card off the field as well as negating is really big. The fact that it can gamma against other gammas. The fact that it can kill other hand traps, which again, other cards don't really have the option. Without Call by the Grave, you need ways to out hand traps. You need ways to out your opponent's board. It's really, really important to have in there. Um, again, I think it's just mandatory to have in. A lot of the time, you are going to side it out after game one anyway, uh, once you know whether you're going to be going first or second. But I think going first or on the assumption that you're not gonna go first in all scenarios this is an absolute must-have next up in our hand traps we've got triple copies of ash blossom and joyous spring uh again it does what it does everyone knows exactly what this card does it's incredibly important it's the one that hits the most decks so it's generic interrupt that you can get and again i think three is a must of in this format as it is in basically every other one then we have triple copies of Ghost Ogre. Uh, I'm feeling less and less that I want to keep this at three. Uh, sometimes I'm considering cutting it down, uh, maybe for another copy of Vela, which we'll get into a moment, uh, in a moment, or you know something else. At the moment, it just feels like three is kind of the default to go with. Um, it, it just doesn't feel as strong, but it is still a very, very good hand trap. Uh, the fact that it's once per turn kind of sucks, much like Ash. Um, so again, opening multiples is kind of dumb, but it is what it is uh so yeah again three copies of this could be something that you swap out could be something that you add another veiler in for uh, instead of one of these or you know play alternative hand traps this is entirely up to you again i just think those six there are just kind of generic and work well against most decks uh, we have two copies of Effect Veiler. Uh, again, as I've just said there, you could definitely play the third if that's something you wanted to do instead of a copy of ogre um yeah, two's worked okay for me. The fact that it is not once per turn is kind of a reason that you might consider playing more copies of it. Um, but also the fact that it can only go during your opponent's turn is a bit of a drawback. So just something to think about. And again, you can play these ratios how you want to. This is just a build that I've been playing and has worked well for me in testing so far. We then got two copies of Nibiru. For some reason, if I play two, I open them like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I always see this card in my hand, which is kind of nice. Probably you won't have the same uh, same scenario as me, but there you go. Uh, yeah, two copies of Nibiru is absolutely plenty if you see it you see it if you don't it's not the end of the world uh, a lot of the time people are playing around it anyway so it doesn't usually go off but if you do have it and they are stupid enough to waltz into it a well time one of these as we all know is uh, the end of their turn so two copies of Nibiru again could be potentially up to a third if that's something you want to do and then our final hand trap is triple infinite impermanence again hopefully we can upgrade these to those nice snazzy gold ones i don't care what anyone says the gold ones look amazing uh, i really want to get these upgraded uh but yeah three copies of infinite impermanence it does what it says uh, it's good going first or second because of course you can set it on the field negate spells and traps that way which can come in absolutely clutch against the right types of decks and then of course if you go in second it's just an effect veiler uh, but being able to do it on both turns is kind of nice and that rounds off our hand traps and then for the final part for the main deck, stuff that I didn't really kind of have a category for, I guess you could say. Uh, triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. Uh, this card gets more and more insane the more you use it. Uh, there's some games where I slide a copy out or two copies out or even all three of them, depending on the deck. But most of the time, this is absolutely bonkers. The amount of stuff it helps you play around is insane. It's really good if you're in a position where you can do like loads of niche interactions. I've been able to send uh, Driver to the Grave so that you can set up for another Gamma later on. So it means it's always live. Uh, you can put materials in the grave for your fusions. Uh, you do all kinds of cool little things like that that, you know, the kind of colossal cranium moments that come up uh, and it helps to facilitate all of that and of course the fact that the opponent essentially can't really respond to it is absolutely nuts the fact that they half attack is nuts uh, it just does so much it's a really really strong card and one that i think is absolutely mandatory to have in their main deck 
And then our final two cards for the main deck are Terraforming and Mystic Mine. Hopefully you didn't think I was going to forget either of these. Of course you need this because you're playing field spells. Uh, Mystic Mine is a free win game one. Lots of people hate it. I don't give a fuck. Um, if you want to win free games, then this is how you do it. People, generally speaking, don't have main deck ways to out this in game one. Uh, so you main it. You play against them if they're if it's the right type of deck or it's the right kind of character that you're up against. You know that you can side in more of these and just auto win those games too. Especially if they let you know that they've got no way out to out it because people do talk way too much. Um, but if if not, then you can just side it out. They'll side in back row here and it'll do them absolutely no favors because you'll have sided this out anyway. But again, free wins in game one. A lot of the time you can just sit there and ask them how many cards they've got in the deck, uh, and if they're smart, they'll scoop up at that time. So again, that does round off our main deck. A nice solid 40 cards, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure someone will call me out on that and I've got it wrong. Um, so we move on to the next part. We're going to look at the Invocation Fusions first. Uh, these are my sort of weapon of choice, I should say. Uh, so we've got one copy of Orgoades, one copy of Kaliga, two copies of Mechaba, one copy of Perga Trio. Orgoades is one of the most important ones in here. Everyone sleeps on this card. Nobody reads what it does. Nobody ever asks. And uh, yeah, it tends to win you games on that alone. The fact that it pops during their turn, which is something they never realize. The fact that it gets massive is just insane. Uh, Kaliga, because you can slow down your opponent. If you've got it on the field with Perga Trio, you can still attack loads of times. Uh, and it switches off their effects. So that's always quite nice. Uh, two copies of Mechaba. Uh, it's Mechaba. I don't really need to add to that. And much the same for Perga Trio. You know what these do. Just punching through OTK in, punishing your opponent for committing too much for the board. Uh, protection, popping cards and making beat sticks and just being... An pain in the ass. Then we have our targets for all of our Dogmatica cards and stuff that we want to dump into the grave. So we've got these four here. Elder Entity Entis. Uh, you know what it does. It pops a card. Titanic Cloud, of course, setting our engine up. I would consider possibly playing a second one of these now that the engine I'm playing is slightly bigger, but for now, one is absolutely fine. And um, we've got Omega in here, but again, it doubles up on the fact that, of course, you play Gamma and Driver, so there are occasions where this comes up that you can actually make this a ripper card out of the opponent's hand. And if nothing else, you can shuffle things back, which, which does come up more than you would think. We have our generic links, these two here, uh, Salaman Great, Armourage, and Secure Gardener. You know what these already do, and if you don't, again, this is just for your Alistair, so you make this, then you link this off of this, and you've instantly got materials for Purgatrio and Mechabar straight away. Uh, this one comes up with its protection effect way more than you'd expect. Uh, there's a lot of the time where you'll uh, make this, and you'll still have the stuff for Mechabar and Grave, so you just keep this on board, A, for more damage, and B, for additional protection, uh, and then the effects of this never really come up, well, ever, in fact. And then we move on to our Super Poly slash Fusion bits. Uh, I kind of bundled Predaplan Vert and Aconda in there as well because obviously it comes up for uh, making using Super Poly. Um, again, just a really strong option to go into um, if you want to get material into the grave and off the field, this can come up. Uh, these two, pretty self-explanatory, two of the most generic ones. This one is a little bit more targeted in that it is mostly for Infernoble and if they end on a dragon as well, um, which doesn't come up an awful lot. But the other good thing about this that people don't realize or don't think about is the fact that it's 3200 attack and in a lot of scenarios way more than you'd think it comes up that you just need a big body to dump for punishment that can uh, allow you to pop a big monster on the field that you otherwise wouldn't be able to out so that is it for the main and the extra deck. Let's take a quick look through what side deck I'm using. Uh, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the side deck. I'll just talk about why I'm playing what I'm playing. Uh, just do keep in mind again that with uh, with side decks, they're kind of tutored to what you're playing against in your locals or in your area. Uh, because as far as I know, there's no events on in the TCG. So let's just assume that's what you're playing against. Um, so we're playing triple copies of Lancia. Uh, Lancia's a kind of broke one at the moment. Um, there's so many decks that this deals with right now that it's just i think it's a bit of a sleeper card one that people aren't necessarily paying enough attention to in my opinion something that people should be trying out uh, it hits this in the mirror match it hits dino uh it hits infernoble way more than people realize it would um it hits dragon link it hits everything um and i think that again it's just being slept on at the moment so something you should definitely consider trying out in your side deck our next and final hand trap for the side deck is triple copies of Droll. Insane at the moment. Definitely one of the best cards you need in your side deck. I would not recommend main decking it. I don't think it is strong enough to warrant that unless you're in a really, really meta heavy uh, tournament that you're already aware of. Otherwise, I would just side this. But again, insanely strong at the moment. Absolutely switches this deck off. Uh, if you just use it, you just win. Uh, it switches off dinos. It can switch off plenty of other decks as well. It's just really, really strong option to, to consider and something you should definitely have in your side deck. And then next, we're moving on to some board breaker cards. 
So we have one copy of Harpies Feather Duster and triple copies of Lightning Storm. It's very rare that I ever side this in, but you know that when you need it, you need it. Uh, there's games where if you don't have this, you just straight lose. You'll come up against that weird rogue deck. You'll come up against Altergeist or something like that and just auto lose if you don't have these cards available to you. Uh, a lot of the time, I end up opening these together and then you can just bait stuff and blow up the, whatever you need to anyway. Uh, really, really strong. There's some games where this is just enough on its own where you know that they've got pesky back row, but nothing too insane. Um, but then the rest of the time, this is something that you'll want to put in, especially if you go in second. And then we have more board breakers, something that's good going first or second. This card is still absolutely insane, so you should definitely take advantage of it. Uh, triple copies of Super Polymerization, of course. Being able to use Predaplan Vert Anaconda with it is absolutely wonderful. Uh, being able to go first and just set it and your opponent commits too much to the board and you just end their turn by swiping up their monsters. You can use it with your own stuff. Um, it works against Dino because you can make Mud Dragon when they leave like all kinds of stuff on the field, which is kind of stupid, but there you go. Um, so even if they try and play around it a lot of the time they don't uh, it just gives you options and again it's just a really really strong card the fact that it can't be responded to is just still filthy and then our final two cards for the extra deck two copies of mystic mine yes if you hate it again i've got some bad news for you i don't fucking care mystic mine free wins who doesn't like them uh i am not a kind of person who has a problem with cheesing some wins against people who aren't prepared for this card. Uh, you should be by now. Everyone should know that it's coming, especially if they're playing against me. If they're turning up at locals where they play me, well, every other week probably, and they know what I'm playing, they know that this is in the extra deck, and if they still don't want to deal with it, then that's up to them. Uh, it does get you free wins. Sometimes it can uh, hit you back, so there is a little bit of karma involved in this, where a lot of the time if you have nothing, you can play this. Um, wait like 10 turns until you've got a god hand and try and play, and hope that they don't have stuff to bat back at. Unfortunately, a lot of the time that doesn't work out because, of course, they've also been able to keep resources themselves. But again, just something that I really like to have in here. Definitely at least the one copy in the main is really important. Uh, the side deck part, that's up to you. But again, I'm really not... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not opposed to cheesing some wins off people with this. So that is it for the deck profile, guys. Hopefully you have found it somewhat informative, uh, give you some ideas of what you could play, um, and things you might want to change, things you might want to try out, things you definitely don't want to do. Uh, just give it a bit of a go and see how you get on. But again, this is likely the build that I'll be playing going into the December format, because of course, here in the UK at least, we don't have locals for at least another couple of weeks or so. Uh, so yeah, again, not on at the moment, so it doesn't require much change, and then again, you're likely playing online anyway. So uh, maybe use this as a basis for your own you can tweak it from there if you guys have any comments on what you think i should be trying out if you think i've missed anything kind of obvious or something that you're playing that you think is really good then definitely let me know about what changes you would make or what changes you like that you've seen in here thank you very much for coming along guys if you're looking to pick up some singles do check out the link in the description to our sponsor jam jam cards uk uh, they will have a nice cheeky discount link in there for you courtesy of myself if you're interested in picking up signed cards at all we can get cards signed for you by myself uh, and get them sent over to you that's not a problem at all thank you very much for checking in guys if you haven't already you should definitely hit subscribe and i'll see you in the next one this content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at jam jam cards uk you can find the links to the ebay store and the facebook page in the description